What's going on everybody? Mike McFarland here, owner of McFarland Fishing and the LakeForkGuide.com. I'm going to keep my promise here and give you probably one of the most difficult lessons um, and probably one of the most in-depth scientific lessons that I think I've ever done, um, period, ever in my life. Um, I did a lot of homework. I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of Google research so that I could deliver this to you in the most I want to say simple form, but it's not that simple. Um, there's some scientific words that I'm going to attempt to use that are above my pay grade, um, but it'll help you understand when we get to the bottom of this. Um, it clarifies exactly what happens and what a thermocline really is, what it does to a lake, how it affects a lake, how it affects fish, and then when the fall weather comes, what a turnover actually is. Um, and, and I know that's a, a, a really, really unanswered question. We use the word so much in fishing, turnover, turnover, turnover. And really, it's just not talked about what it really is and how it truly affects the lake as well. Okay, so we're gonna try and go slow. I usually go so fast with things. I understand that my energy level is out the door sometimes. We try and go smooth with this, so hopefully you don't have to rewatch it over and over again. I have a diagram, pretty in-depth diagram, and uh, here we go. So stay tuned. Okay. What is a thermocline? Okay. A thermocline is a steep temperature gradient in a body of water, marked by a layer above and below, okay? Um, those layers above and below are different temperatures. So in essence, we've got three layers of water. I'm gonna go to the diagram real quick. We have an upper layer, upper water column. We have the thermocline itself, which it tends to be even in its own temperature gradient, and then a water column below. This is the bottom, okay? I didn't have brown for a bottom, but I wish I did. So three, two water columns separated by a temperature gradient. All right, let's just sit that down right now. Basically, it's a thin layer, um, but it's a distinct layer. It's usually about 18 to 24 inches thick. It can be greater. In shallow lakes, it can be one to 10 feet, okay? Um, and basically, it's a temperature change. It's more drastic with the depth than the layers above and below, okay? Um, in the ocean, for example, um, the thermocline divides the mixed layer above, which is where the currents are, with the calm, cooler water below, um, the deep water below. And it's not always cool and warm. In the wintertime, it can be warm and cool, okay? Remember that. Um, and sometimes in super, super deep places like the ocean, it's very common to have multiple thermoclines. In the ocean, sometimes a thermocline can merely be established by a layer of plankton, phytoplankton, zooplankton. Um, the layer of plankton creates a cloud itself. It may stop sun penetration, but it creates a cloud itself and it tends to exist in that gradient. So that gradient is a comfort zone a lot of times. It's the right temperatures, has good oxygen in it, so the phytoplankton, zooplankton will exist in it, okay? And we're gonna to get to that a little bit more here. But generally, on Lake Fork, okay, um, we do not have multiple thermoclines. We do not get a winter thermocline we get a summer thermocline, which has the water above, warmer, 88 to 94 in that entire water column, than the water below, 65 to 70, okay? Thermocline separates the two. Now, on fork, a lot of times what's going to happen is, is, in simple terms, it's a transition layer of those two, those two water columns, okay? 
what happens is, now let, let's first keep going. I, I want to talk about something before I get into what's really happening. In a shallow pond, for example, like my pond here at my house, we can have a thermocline as shallow as three feet. It's relative to the depth of the pond. Um, you can also have them as deep as 35 to 40 feet. In these shallow Texas-born lakes, the average is 35, 40 feet. So we are going to see, tend to see, the 18 to 24 foot range is where that thermocline is going to be. Whether it be Sam Raver, uh, Livingston, Fork, uh, most of these lakes in these areas, Hubbard, Roberts, etc. You're going to establish a thermocline in about 18 to 20 feet, 22 feet. Okay, well, some fishermen will actually call this, an experienced fisherman will call this layer an invisible habitat. All right, and, and here's why. Okay, so what happens is the water temperatures tend to position fish, period. They do throughout the entire year. Okay, they position fish and they position bait. In the springtime, the entire water column is all the same, with exception of the subsurface the 12 to 18 inch subsurface that warms and cools every day. And I talk about that when I do the rundown. I tell you that subsurface temperature, how it changes each day. But the entire water column in the spring will be the same. Eventually, as we get near summer, the stratification starts to happen, the summer stratification. And that's usually when the lake fork is up around 88 to 94. You'll start to see that haze on your sonar. If you're not seeing the haze, you need to boost your sonar a little bit to see it because it's there. Okay, um, and really what happens on fork, again, it's a layer of cool water below and warm water above. Okay, um, the thickness of this layer in between generally on fork is about 18, um, is about 18 to 24 inches um, when it's finished. But we'll see it sometimes be four, five, six feet. It starts from that bottom and it solidifies, it, it stratifies into the middle zone right there. Okay. Um, it really depends too on depths, locations, and water clarity. That's really important. Um, but here's what happens. Generally in Fork, the lower water is going to be 65, 70 degrees, 88, and 94 on the upper. At the beginning of this, oxygen is throughout from top to bottom. Okay? It's, it truly is. There's oxygen completely through the entire water columns. Okay? As they begin to divide, as they begin to stratify, and the thermocline solidifies, it gets solid, it creates, it blocks sun, okay? Sun creates oxygen, actually. Sun and phytoplankton, um, initially when, when the lake stratifies, the lower portions are well oxygenated, okay? But the, the thermocline blocks that deep water, um, and it also stops a lot of the phytoplankton, believe, believe it or not, is a source of oxygen. And so what starts to happen is, is the upper water column is so hot that there's low oxygen conditions. The bottom below at that time is blocked. There's very little sunlight. So the dying debris from low oxygen, the dying algae, the dying leaves, um, when plant and animal life starts to die, it sinks to the bottom. And so we have this upper layer, the lower layer, and this thermocline. Things start dying and sinking to the bottom. The upper layer is so hot, the upper layer is low oxygen. There is no oxygen down below once this is stratified. And the bottom starts having all this dead debris on the bottom of it. It builds up. Okay? Um, and it's, it's decomposing organic matter. As that organic matter falls through the water column, it consumes the oxygen below. So that's, that answers your question. You're saying, how, where's the oxygen go below? Once that debris falls, and the, the com I just said it, the decomposing organic matter basically consumes that oxygen, okay? So now we have two separated water columns. One has no oxygen, and one above has minimum oxygen because it's hot. It's very hot. It's uncomfortable to the fish. These two layers, by the way, are called epilimnion and hypolimnion, all right? Those are the scientific words that are really hard to use. They're meaningless to us, um, but that's a scientific word of those two water columns at that time, okay? When the lower body gets void of oxygen, it forces the fish to use the more uncomfortable 
upper water column due to oxygen only. And what this does is it now puts these fish up in this super, super hot water. And they don't necessarily like it, okay? It should be nice to be down here in a bass's comfort zone. If you remember back in spring, I talked about a bass's favorite temperatures. Generally, the spawn time, the happy, healthy bass, bass love 65 to 70 degrees. In deeper lakes, the West Coast lakes, for example, some of them are 200 feet. We don't have this happen in that body. Because there is only, say, we got an 18 to 22 foot thermocline here, and there's only another 18 to 20 feet or so in Lake Fork, there's no room for dissipation of all of that dying debris. In a 200 foot lake, like Lake Pleasant, for example, the upper dying decaying debris falls through the thermocline, and there's so much water below to absorb it, there is no oxygen loss. And the bass actually use the thermocline itself, which they do here too, I'll explain that in a minute, and the water below, because it's a comfort temperature, it's cooler than above, and there is oxygen in it, okay? We lose the oxygen. Right now, if you go out and drop a live brim in the bottom 28 feet, within three minutes, it's dead. You put it in the upper water column, it lives for a little while, it struggles. And, but believe it or not, this is the important part, okay? The thermocline is the gradient of the cooling to temperatures, okay? And because of that, some of the oxygen produced in the upper level mixes in here, and it actually becomes the habitat. This is the cool part. This is what Mark Pack really understood. The thermocline itself now becomes the ultimate habitat where fish can find cool and oxygenated water, okay? They don't have to be up here in the 88, 94. They can't be below because there is no oxygen, but they find where these two temperatures blend or separate is cooler oxygenated water in the thermocline, in the stratification of the thermocline, okay? Now, bass tend to go find food. In this case, most of the time, the food is also in there because the plankton and the, the, the shad, et cetera, which feed on plankton, they're also looking for that comfort zone. Shad demand high oxygen, the highest they can be in. So the shad are gonna be in this thermocline zone. Everything begins to stack in this 18 to 22 foot level on Lake Fork. Um, and so, and unfortunately, I'm gonna destroy my diagram here and give you an idea in just a second of, of um, explaining where you should fish on fork in July and August, um, and even some of September before the turnover happens. And so real quick now, if this is the bottom, and we got 45 foot depth, okay? And, and the thermocline sitting at 18 to 22 feet, all right? Mark Pack used to love to find himself a big old giant oak tree with all its appendages and limbs. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick squiggle here. But he'd find himself a big oak tree out there in 45, 55 feet of water. And the tops of that oak tree would come through the thermocline and the stratification area. He would then take the impact shad, weightless, peg a few nail weights in it, and throw that bait and let it fall into the tops of those trees. And he was the master of it. He was the master of fishing the habitat. Has a bedroom, a kitchen, oxygen, comfort temperature zone. All in one. This is the trick on Lake Fork to have daily success in great numbers this time of year. Now, sometimes, and this does also happen on Fork, the bait fish, the food, does not always come to the bass. So the bass have to leave. I call this a bedroom. It's got the big tree, they got a home, they're comfortable. Sometimes they have to leave this to go find food. 
Um, there is oxygen in that upper level. It is hot, but there's still brim in the shallow waters. There's still crawfish in the shallow waters. And sometimes with cooling nights a little bit, things can rise in the middle of the night and go to the shoreline. So these fish will leave this comfort zone to go find food, but they will return like a bedroom for comfort. This is where the theory you've heard me say, bedrooms, kitchens, bedrooms, kitchens. Know where they live, know where they feed. And now you're gonna, you should know, anybody who follows me, where do they go feed? Shell beds, wind blown shell beds. So through the course of the night, the temperature drops back to 88 degrees, 84 degrees, if we're lucky we get in the 70s. The upper water column cools. There's a little bit of sinking water because Cool water sinks. So the shallow water becomes cool in the morning, a little cooler anyways. And then those shell beds provide wind, which brings plankton, which feeds the shells where the plankton is. The shad will feed where the shad feed, the bass come feed. And that's why those early morning shell beds are active. So early morning shell beds, back to your deep water trees. That's your concept of fishing lake fork in the summer. That's why right now we get a top water bite in the first couple hours if you're in the right spot. You can throw something. Some of the fish are being caught in four to eight feet of water. Big fish. I've got friends, Jay Bonner, um, a lot of the guides that I know, Jason Kahn, they, they start out fishing in less than 10 feet of water for the first two hours. And then they go deeper progressively as the day goes on. And preferably no deeper than 22 feet. But find yourself some sweet holes in the 18 to 22 feet and you're on the money. Okay, so I really hope that I made that kind of clear and what a thermocline is, what a thermocline does. In the wintertime, it's just the opposite. You'll have warm water below, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the, uh, warmer water below, cooler water above. We don't see that on Fork. We do not get a winter thermocline, but there are lakes, Lake Pleasant, for example, in Arizona. The water down below becomes warmer than the upper water. Upper water gets cool. Lower water gets warm, and they still use it just the same because, remember, temperature is the most important factor that places fish. They choose the most comfortable temperature, kind of like you and I set our AC for comfort. They want a certain comfort zone. The temperature decides their body metabolism. They're a cold-blooded creature, so they can't change that. They're going to find the most comfortable and available best temperatures for survival reasons. The higher the water temperature, the higher the metabolism, the more often they have to eat, the higher the digestive rate, the cooler the water, the slower the digestive rate. Ideally, if we didn't have this loss of oxygen in Lake Fork, these fish would be just below it on humps and things like that. That's why if you go back and when this is first happening, they're all over the humps and stuff and, you know, 18, 22, 28 feet of water. Well, that's because there's still cool water below. They go down, they, they spawn happens in April, May, and they go down to this deeper, cooler water because it's got oxygen. And they're in 18, 28, 40 feet of water. It's cooler. It's, they love it. But as all of this again happens and stratification comes in by mid-July, the thermocline happens, the dying debris starts to sink, oxygen is depleted, and devoided down below. And here is your, my best te teaching lesson on what a thermocline is, what a thermocline does to Lake Fork. Okay? Now, I'm gonna set this down just a little bit. Here comes the next part. Hope you're staying with me. Hope you're learning from this. Hope you're enjoying this. Turnover. Turnover. Um, and by the way, a thermocline sometimes can happen. Uh, let, let's go a little more on the thermocline. Thermocline can actually happen multiple times in a season uh, um, and, and be turned over. And so as I lead you into this turnover, understand that sometimes on, on Fork, you've seen, those of you knowledgeable, it, it was confusing to me at first, but I'd see the thermocline come in in July, August, and then all of a sudden in September, the thermocline would break, and I'll explain what that means in a minute, and then come back. And then it'd break and it'd come back. And so, first of all, the turnover is the seasonal mixing or remixing of the entire water column. So remember, right now we got a warmer water above, cooler water below. September comes around and the nights start really cooling. 
or we have a big cool cold front that finally hits and puts cold water on top, cold rainwater, or the nights start dropping down to 60 degrees, cold water sinks. So eventually, this water column is going to have sinking, cooling water, which will break this thermocline and blend the entire water column back again. Warm water comes, I'm sorry, the, the bottom now comes to the top and the top goes to the bottom. That's a turnover, okay? That can happen multiple times in a season. Um, we warm back up. We have a week in crazy weather in Texas. So we have one really hot week right after a cool trend and the thermocline comes back. And that's why usually about September, we start seeing all of that dead, dying, decayed debris that fell through the water column back in July and August float to the top, okay? Um, the cool water sinks through, breaks the thermocline, and the turnover begins. The bottom layer now becomes the top, and the top layer becomes the bottom. When this happens, um, you basically start seeing all that dead debris rise. Um, it's decaying stuff that sank to the bottom. And it's really, a lot of times, it's dead algae, it's dead weeds, leaves, it's not dead fish. Um, and in fork, it tends to be more of a methane gas. It's decay. It's rotted stuff that, that is oils, okay? Oils start to float up. They're all preserving down here, dead, when that thermocline is keeping it there. Thermocline is broken. It all comes up to the surface, and it's the one and only time of year that we see this lake turn ugly. It smells. The water gets this putrid color looking. You have to wipe your boat down on a daily basis because it gets the oil stuck all over it. The methane gases create yellow bubbles throughout the entire lake. When you see this, the lake has turned over. Now, the turnover itself happens in a day two or three. The turnover isn't a long process. We actually miss the turnover part. The turnover is when the thermocline is broken and the two water columns blend up and become one. Okay, that's the turnover. It can happen in two or three days. We then see the effects from the turnover, which is all the dead bloating debris and brown colored water and oils and yellow bubbles everywhere. And we see that for two, three, four, five, six weeks sometimes, depending on how many times the late warm trends and cool trends. Does this come back and do it again? Or is it a one-time turnover? Does the thermocline come back and it turns over again? Thermocline comes back, turn over again? I've seen it do that on Fork. And so we end up having two or three turnovers, but the debris and the water color and the oils and those nutty, the yucky water maintains for six to eight weeks. It's not a good thing because what happens now is the entire water column is depleted of oxygen. There's still good oxygen, but it's mostly depleted everywhere. And it creates what they call hypoxic zones, which is dead zones, areas with low or little oxygen, okay? I can tell you firsthand that if you're on fork in September, October specifically, and you're fishing around an area that has yellow bubbles, thick, 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 thick yellow bubbles, look at the color of the water in that area. It's going to be kind of a, a tannicky, brown, yucky looking color. You're in the wrong spot. You're in a hypoxic zone. It's very, very low oxygen. It has a lot of methane gases in it, and fish don't like it, okay? There's plenty of areas that are good, and where those areas can be on fork, first of all, is very shallow. And the reason is, is when we have wind on fork, and Lake Fork is always windy, um, it just is, okay? Mark Pack used to say, if you don't like fishing in the wind, then you don't want to fish on Lake Fork as wind almost all year long, except for the summer months of July and August. Um, but when that wind pushes the surface one direction, what tends to happen is when it hits the shore, it's crashing and oxygenating. Okay? So now wind is even more your friend. In September, October, November, when that lake is turned over, the turnover part has happened. The effects of the turnover are the yellowing bubbles and the brown water and the nasty stuff. You want to go look for the cleanest, clearest water you can find. And you want to find wind-blown points and pockets where that water is crashing enough because crashing water oxygenates itself. The more the water is making bubbles and crashing, rolling up on the shore and doing things, it is oxygenating itself. 
And those fish tend to be in less than four feet of water on Lake Ford. It's the craziest thing. But they, when you find the right spot that's got the right amount of oxygen, they will pile up in it. And I mean pile up in it. And most of the time, it's less than four feet of water on Lake Ford. Main lake points, windblown shallow pockets, places of cleaner, clearer water that do not have yellow bubbles, that do not have that yucky, brown, tannicky water look. you got to search for it because it's not everywhere. I've seen Lake Fork be really, really bad where there's not a lot of places to fish. Um, and the fish that they all don't go to those one spots or it, it wouldn't work. And there's lots of fish in Lake Fork. The ones that are in areas that are discomfort don't eat. It's like you and I having a tummy ache. They're, they're struggling. They're, they're, they're surviving. They're not dying, but they're not happy. And so they kind of dormitize and, and they don't have energy and they don't feel good. And, and, and I'll analogy, they, they got a belly ache. They're not happy. So they don't eat. There's less eating. Now, big winds in October, November can churn the lake. That's the best thing we can have happen is churn the lake and or flooding rains that bring fresh new water in. Um, to lessen the devoided oxygen places, reblend the lake up, and, and, and the turnover can pass sometimes in two to three weeks with a real good winds in the fall, but I've seen it sit for six to eight weeks before here on Fork, and so is Mark Pack. Um, all right, man, I, I know this was a long one. It had no choice but to be a long one. I hope that explains in the most clear terms that I can what is a thermocline, how it affects it. Remember, it creates the perfect habitat. Perfect water temperatures, good oxygen in the summer. The fish pile up and they all using one zone. With that being said, I'm going to close you on something. What makes an elite angler so good? An elite angler, BAS elite angler or an MLF angler understands how to go study a lake and they know by the experience and they know by science that fish use 90% of the fish use 10% of the lake. Okay, so what they do is they go eliminate the 90% of the lake that's not being used and they fish the 10% of the lake where the fish are. And that usually is, number one, a, a certain depth range, but it's established by water temperatures, choice water temperatures, food and oxygen, and not necessarily in that order. Temperatures, oxygen, food. Okay, that's what this is doing. It's creating one beautiful layer. One perfect little habitat to find those fish in. Okay, when in the spring, when that entire water column is all the same temperatures, man, it can be hard to find the fish on fork because they're scattered. They're in zero feet, two feet, eight feet, 12 feet, 22 feet. They're scattered right now. They are not scattered. Okay, that's it. So, man, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for the original subscription. Um, if you enjoyed this lesson, if this really took heart and you, you took it home to you and you learned something from it, first of all, please hit the like button below, comment below, consider hitting the super thanks for me. I really put a lot of hard time in this. I studied a lot. I went and read a lot of scientific things. I Googled things so that I could give you the best lesson possible um, that made more sense. So please consider hitting the super thanks and rewarding me for, for the hard work and sharing it with you guys. Um, I'd also like to invite you over to the Members Only channel. Um, when I finish this here, we're going to go do a, a Tuesday public rundown for you about Fork. And we're going to do a Tuesday Members Only rundown. And there is a difference. In the public, I tell you about the fishing, the water temperatures, the things like that. In the private Members Only, I spill my guts and I tell you the colors, the patterns, exactly how to catch them, and exactly where to catch them. So, Check out the members only. It's $4.99 a month. I'm asking you to at least give it one try. You can unsubscribe after the end of one month and you've lost $4.99. That's it. We lose more lures. We burn more fuel. I promise you, if you fish Fork, if you fish the areas are here around Fork, Sam Rayburn, uh, Toledo Bend, even in some of the local shallow lakes around here, the Fork report that I give every week, twice a week, and the members only is relative to what's happening in the area within probably two to three hours. They're all shallow lakes. They all tend to have the same temperatures, the same kind of habits. And the report that I give for Lake Fork usually is relative in the whole and surrounding area. I have a lot of comments from members that I have, over 200 members, who say they use it at other lakes and it works. Both the baits that I choose 
to use here at Forca that we're using and what I call the rule of three, which puts you in the right part of the lake, the 90% of the lake, or I'm sorry, the 10% of the lake that 90% of the fish use. That's why I do the rule of three, is I want to put you in the highest percentage possible area where there's the most fish increasing your odds to catch them. All right, that's it, man. I'm grateful for you. Again, thank you so much for watching. I am Michael McFarland, the Lake Fork Guide and owner of McFarland Fishing.